hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race vs. the Community, we would go racing with some B-Class Fords. It kind of turned out to be more Mustangs and a couple of other assorted Fords. Uh, didn't quite expect so many Mustangs. I knew they'd be a popular choice, but uh, yeah, it was, it was B-Class Fords, our first race at the Road America West Alternate Loud. A Mustang Mach 1 has some mega, mega straight line speed down this uh, back straight. If you build a B-Class car to have that much speed, you're going to have problems elsewhere. You saw the <laughs> the Mustang leading the race had a little bit of a lock-up, and sure enough, is out wide. A few other cars had issues. That is a big stop down into that uh, that corner, especially with everyone jostling for position, etc. This Mustang boss ends up out a little bit wide, not quite where you want to be. Could have been punished by the Mustang behind, although that car then ends up out wide through the next turn. And we all just about make it through the opening lap in one piece. I had gone for the Mustang GT, the 2015 car, figuring it'd probably not be a particular popular choice. Uh, starting off in B-Class, didn't have a huge amount of PI to play with the car. There were a couple of other ones around as I get myself up the inside of a very slidey SVT Cobra on the outside. Uh, I was currently uh, following a, another 15 Mustang. He'd gone for a much faster car at a straight line, but nowhere near as good handling through the turns. Thought about making it three wide, very quickly changed my mind. Realised that's just a recipe for disaster. Fall into line, go around the outside of the Mustang bus. The, <laughs> the poor boss was struggling a little bit for speed in these opening laps. Yeah, my car, to actually get it into, into B class, you see I'm running a rear wing and I've got a roll cage. After I put race tyres and tyre widths on the car, it was actually up into A class. So, had to uh, try and drop the PI a little bit. Did work though, and my Mustang was a bloody nice car to drive. I was expecting to see quite a lot of the new Focus RSs. We didn't see that many. Saw a couple, but uh, yeah, they weren't a hugely popular, popular choice. This one tried to defend from a uh, King Cobra. Couldn't make it work, though. Just ran too deep in the braking zone, and now he's under fire from just about everyone else. And SVT is up the inside. He's going to hang the Focus out wide. That's going to give a Sierra plenty of space to get himself alongside. And still, the Focus is stuck on the outside. King Cobra, massive slide across the curves is trying to uh, to get alongside and this all stems from the focus being out of position for one turn a cortina dies up the inside and gets two cars in one corner fantastic uh, opportunistic overtake from the Cortina there to make it stick. And the Cobra's around the outside. The SVT makes it stick around the outside as well. The Focus did not have a good half a lap in all of that. The Cortina, yes, it is technically a Lotus Cortina, but Fords are still counted as a Ford. So it is uh, running in this Cortina. Very, very good handling car, as you could imagine. By far the lightest car here, I would imagine. Yeah, has a stupendous grip through the turns around the outside of a Sierra and then around the outside of a Mustang Boss as well through the next car. That's two cars in two quarters. Up next, King Cobra. King Cobras can actually be pretty fast cars, so it wasn't going to be the easiest of vehicles here to overtake, but the Cortina just has so much grip and dive into these quarters. He gets himself up the inside, although there's not a huge amount of space to go anywhere with an Escort and an SVT. The Cortina gets a big slide on the way and gets, I think, a little bit saved by being boxed in between two cars, so he can't actually spin it around. Has huge acceleration on the outside of the yellow car. Make that move stick as well. And it's about four cars in half a lap for the <laughs> Cortina. It was mighty, mighty good through these turns. Now the SVT was under fire from a uh, from a King Cobra. Yeah, the Cortina had huge, huge speed around this circuit. And it was by far this mid-pack that would have the most interesting of races as the SVT comes under fire from the King Cobra. The Mustang sticking it around the outside and making it stay there. So for the next quarter, the purple car can have the opportune line. The SVT just struggling a little bit for speed. These King Cobras are not particularly good cars. They're terrible, terrible cars from standard. However, uh, because they start off such low PI, you can do a lot of modifications to them to get them up into B class, which does make them a uh, fairly popular popular choice, and they can be pretty quick. Uh, sticking with the King Cobra, another one had a poor start, but was trying to make his way up through the order. Gives a little bit of a hurry up bump to the uh, Escort as we come up the hill. You know things are close when the uh, replay camera has the car disappear. We're almost looking at going three wide. In, so that's not really where you want to uh, 
to be going three wide, particularly. They make it stick, though. A big slide from the Escort would cost him a position. You know, when everybody's running this close together on track, you really can't afford to make any mistakes. You saw the focus plummet through the field from uh, just being out of position in one corner. The Escort gets a little bit more lucky, but... Uh, yeah, is still a very, very easy way to uh, get in trouble. The Sierra would uh, make his way past the Escort and then immediately get into trouble. Runs too wide and gets stuck on the outside. The Escort's uh, going to go to the inside. I think the Sierra maybe upbraked himself, was uh, quite lenient in giving the Escort some room. And now we see exactly the same story we saw with the Focus, only this time on the poor Sierra. It's out wide through one corner. That puts him out of position slightly for the next turn. The SVT will hold it around the outside, much like we saw the King Cobra do to the yellow car earlier. That sticks the Sierra on the wide line through the next corner, and another Mustang sneaks his way up the inside. Sierra is still quite well positioned, although forced to take a very, very tight line through this next hairpin, which is slightly less than ideal. He sticks it alongside the SVT, but you're on the outside for this very, very long final turn, and unless you have got mega levels of grip, that is not a place that you want to be. And sure enough, the Sierra is hung out to dry. The Fox Body Mustang would find a way past as well. Not a good half a lap for the uh, Sierra. In all the slight ghosting of the car, Dodo Forza replays being a little bit on the on the dodgy side. But uh, yeah, you get put out wide at one corner when everyone is that close, you can get in a lot of trouble. At the front, I was leading the race. I made a couple of mistakes and the Cortina was incredibly fast around here, was catching me very, very quickly towards the end. However, Cortina would simply run out of laps. I made sure not to do anything stupid. I actually ran out wide a couple of times off this final turn, so I was being very careful not to do anything stupid around the final turn, and my Mustang would take victory from the Cortina. Unfortunately, uh, there was a, the other 15 Mustang and uh, Escort that were quite quick, uh, close to lap times, and a laggy shunt that dropped them well back, so... Yeah, it was still a pretty a pretty good and exciting first race. A second race, we would head to the Catalonia National Circuit as we all stream down towards turn one. Again, we see a couple more of the, the Focus RSs making it in this one. A couple of cars end up out wide. I, I apologize, I slightly missed my breaking points in uh, this one. I probably didn't help matters down into turn one, so I was buried in the field a, a little bit. The Escort, though, that we are following at the moment, gets a great run up towards the top of the hill and would make a pass stick. Always scary going around the outside of cars at, uh, at the top of the uh, top of the hill there. But, uh, yeah, well done for making it all cleanly through there. Further back, and as per usual, there was a shuffling of the order as a Sierra has some big oversteer problems coming out of the final turn and still more, <laughs> more oversteering from the uh, Sierra, just struggling for grip. This uh, Escort had an awful lot of straight line speed. Him and a Mustang both catching a Cortina. Cortina, of course, very quick through the turns, but lacking some speed down this uh, start finish straight. The Mustang uh, goes for the bravery around the outside of turn one, slightly tags. The uh, Escort ends up with a wheel out in the sand. The Cortina catches up massively, of course, as soon as we get to the, uh, the turn. And for now, though, the Escort would keep hold of the position. Now, I got boxed around and bumped uh, a fair bit in the open. I pretty much got dumped to the back of the uh, the field in this one so i had a mega recovery drive to be doing and sure enough once more my mustang was bloody fast around this track i really liked this uh, car it's a very very good vehicle to a drive as i get up the inside of a sierra I get up the inside of a fox body mustang as well the <laughs> king cobra ahead uh, gets a bit too much oversteer he goes exploring into the sand as well yeah, I had a, I could carry a lot of corner speed in my in my car. At the front, there was an interesting battle going on. We had a King Cobra leading the way, being chased by a 65 Mustang. Now, the King Cobra had monumental straight line speed. However, the 65 Mustang was far better through the corners. So the the leader would make up all of his time down the back straight, and then for the remainder of the lap, the 65 Mustang would catch up to him. So they would pretty much kind of have this same margin for the majority of the time. But uh, yeah, the 65 could never quite get into the right place to get an overtake. Of course, if you are driving that ridiculously fast car in a straight line, you've got to do a, a really rather good job of keeping that thing under control. Because yeah, not the easiest of cars to uh, get around a track. 
My recovery drive was continuing as I got up to the back of another 15 Mustang. My car though, the far superior one through the corners. The car ahead does go very, very defensive into the hairpin. I can just carry so much more speed through the turns. I can get on the power sooner and uh, pretty much out accelerate him up towards the next corner and could pull well clear. The, the little bit of straight line speed that I was lacking compared to some other cars was more than made up for by the amount of corner speed that uh, I, could, I could take with my vehicle, which was rather nice. Unfortunately... The replay for this race uh, kind of breaks. I don't know why. It's very rare that we have a replay. It cuts off with uh, round about the halfway stage through the race. It cuts off, missing the uh, missing the latter laps. I don't know why. It's, um, yeah, a rather peculiar one. At the front, this is how the race would remain between these two cars. The uh, King Cobra just about managing to maintain the gap and not make any mistakes because it wouldn't have taken much for the uh, 65 Mustang to have uh, to have got past. Yeah, I, uh, I apologize for the uh, rather dodgy replay. Our final race, and we would head to the Silverstone GP circuit in rather atrocious conditions, really. The puddles on the start line are horrendous as an SVT ahead of me gets a wheel on the pilot, just gets tipped sideways. There is so little that uh, you can do if you end up getting forced across a puddle or you just don't quite see the puddle there. It's, um, yeah, not, uh, not a particularly nice start line in the wet here. And there was plenty of chaos at the start of this race. I was trying to be opportunistic and picking up places as and where I could end up getting a little bit stuck on the outside here as <laughs> King Cobra gets a little tap. you just got to go and frantically try and avoid all of the mayhem that uh, was going on at the start of this race. A pretty scruffy start for uh, for Versus Community, certainly. I made it through, certainly uh, one of the cars starting further back, I did pretty well to uh, survive the absolute melee that uh, went on through the first couple of quarters. I have a big dive up the inside of a Mac 1, managed to overshoot though a little bit. You've got to be careful overshooting in the dry, you can get away with it. In the wet though, there is a horrendous puddle stuck on the outside there, which I go through and that gets me all sorts of crossed up as I'm now trying to fend off an escort and don't really have any answer for the escort's acceleration out of the turns. I'm stuck on the outside, nothing I can really do. I try my very, very best wheel across the curb, but it's not enough to fend off that uh, escort and he would get the position. The field would very, very quickly spread out in this one. Up front, uh, a Fox Body Mustang survived, or started on pole, survived the opening lap and had made a huge gap back to second place that uh, was this escort coming under increasing pressure though from a Sierra. The Sierra dived to the inside at the end of the straight. A fairly, fairly solid overtaking spot down there. Uh, the Sierra would get the move done. The Escort's now got to worry though. Being out a little bit wide, a little slow through the corner. The car behind the Red Escort is going to have a bit go down the inside into the chicane. Very easy to uh, overrun that and sure enough the black car's trying to come back around the outside. There's just so little grip out there. Combine that with a wheel across the curb. Nope, there is not enough grip to try and make that one stick around the outside of the final corner. He would have to fall back into line for fourth place. Further back, there was going to be a race-long battle between this uh, Ford Capri and Mustang Mach 1. The Capri, pretty fast in a straight line. I've never been able to build a good Capri in, in Forza. I just cannot get one of these cars to handle at all. I can build fast ones in a straight line. They tend to be atrocious around the corners. This one managed to uh, make his way to the inside. The Mustang Mach 1 had some issues out wide on the, on the corner that would allow the Capri to get past. But uh, yeah, the Capris do tend to be uh, rather a handful well, through the quarters in the dry, let alone in the wet. You can see it wiggling his way around the final quarter, and the Mach 1 certainly wasn't out of the battle yet. Once more, King Cobras were going relatively fast around here. This purple car was absolutely flying through the field. The red car goes defensive, and in doing so, you tend to run a little bit wide on exit, runs a little too wide, wheel across the curb, not what you want to do, slows down your momentum, and the purple car would take the position. Magus and Beckett is also horrible in the rain here. You've got to wait to turn in because you don't want to go through a, a huge puddle on the inside. So it really is it's just one line through that corner. You don't want to be going side by side because of the horrendous puddle uh, that is to the inside of the track. And uh, yeah, the purple car would then set about chasing down 
vehicles further up. And, as I said, these guys were back at uh, the fight between the Mach 1 and the Capri. Capri's on the inside. You can see them struggling to get the car stopped, to get the car turned. The Mach 1 tries to hold it around the outside, but ends up in the puddle. As I said at the start, you really don't want to be stuck in that puddle. You get so little in the way of traction. But you can carry much better speed around the uh, corner than the Capri, although is a little bit too far back now to try anything. He's got to watch out, though. The... Uh, rather distinctive Mac one behind gets a mega run down the old start finish straight to go to the inside of the next corner again in the dry you can sometimes hold it around the outside but uh, in the wet a little bit trickier and sure enough the black car just completely loses the back end and uh, has to use the <laughs> runoff area it is uh, yeah quite tough going around the outside of somebody uh, and in the wet especially at such a fast corner as that one However, the Capri struggles through Maggis and Beckett's. That slows the lime green car right back into uh, his fellow Mac 1. They were all getting caught a little bit by uh, Focus RS behind. Black car tries to get a good run, does get a very good run onto the straight, but is lacking that little bit of straight line speed. The Mac 1 goes off to challenge the Capri, although the Capri pretty good down the straights here, forcing the Mac 1 around the outside. And while the Mustang wouldn't quite get the move done yet, it wouldn't be long before he would find a way past. At the front, as we came on to the final lap, the Mustang leading was trying frantically to defend his position. The Escort had been catching relatively quickly in the closing stages of this race. The Mustang had just one more lap to hold on to the lead. However, the Escort was just too good, even with sliding the car slightly around the corner. The Escort could get himself to the inside. The Mustang has nowhere to really go. Again, another big puddle that you don't want to end up in. And in all of that fighting, the Sierra caught up massively, and he would sweep around the outside of the Mustang as well. That big fight was also helping me catch up from uh, fourth place with uh, with my Mustang. Yeah, yeah, getting getting kind of stuck uh, in some of the puddles could cause big issues around this track. At the front, though, as they came to the end of the lap, it would be the Escort that would go on to take victory. Just saw that couple of corners uh, battling with the Fox, but it did allow the Sierra to catch up slightly, but Sierra was too far back. The Escort would take victory from the Sierra, be the first race that wasn't won by a Mustang. However, there would be a Mustang on the podium. I, by the end of the race, I got the hang of driving my car at this track. It was absolutely flying. It was quicker than the two leaders, although quicker than me was a King Cobra behind. Uh, I tried to go, I thought about going around the outside of the Fox body. In the end, didn't really need to. He just couldn't carry the same quarter speed that I had in my vehicle. Cut back to the inside, and that would put my car past. Just make sure you don't do anything stupid into the final turn here. There's a nasty puddle on the braking zone as well if you're too far to the right hand side of the track so don't make any silly mistakes and I would get third place in my 15 Mustang I really like my car my car fared really really well around this circuit a Focus RS would get a fifth place in this one ahead of the very very quick King Cobra in sixth so yeah the Silverstone race is a little bit uh, scrappy certainly at the start uh, the rain I think catching out a few a few people in that one I had kind of expected a few more uh, different Fords. It was a very Mustang heavy versus the community. As I said, my, my 50 Mustang was a lovely car. I did not expect it to be as fast as it was. Yeah, a really rather solid, a really good overall uh, B-class car. That one had pretty good straight line speed, but also handled incredibly well. However, that is it for this week's Versus Community. The next one shall be held on Thursday the 12th of May. We are going to go racing with D-Class front-wheel drive cars. If you would like to sign up and take part in that, then you can via our forums. There will be a link in the description. Find the Ferraris Versus the Community section, and you can sign up in there. But uh, that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.